The views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views or positions of any entities that they represent. This program is intended for educational purposes. You're listening to. Rap sun rahe hain. You're listening. Din suno tha. Singh lagai kena da. You kill ta idhar. Hai kada. Re katha sun. Radio. 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 Azim Premji. University. हुई मुद्दत के गालिब मर गया पर याद आता है वो हर एक बात पे कहना कि यूं होता तो क्या होता इट्स बिन अ वाइल्स इन गालिब इज डेड एंड गॉन बट वी कीप रिमेंबरिंग हिज हैबिट ऑफ सेइंग एट एवरी टर्न व्हाट इफ दिस हैड हैपेंड व्हाट इफ थिंग्स हैड टर्न्ड आउट दिस वे इंस्टेड ऑफ दैट हाय माय नेम इज अमित बसोले आई टीच इकोनॉमिक्स एट अजीम प्रेम जी यूनिवर्सिटी दिस शो दो इज नॉट अबाउट इकोनॉमिक्स It's about the poetry and the world of Mirza Ghalib. I discovered the poetry of Ghalib when I was in my early 20s doing a PhD. At the time I used to study biology, but I was sucked in by Urdu poetry and music. I discovered a website. This is in the early days of the web. A website dedicated to the poetry of Ghalib, and the more I read, the more my heart with pleasure filled. to quote a contemporary of ghalib that many of us have read in school now i am not a scholar of literature or of urdu i'm not even a native urdu speaker but ghalib really speaks to me and i think he will probably speak to you too more recently i worked on a book with a friend of mine anju maltaf who is in lahore uh, the book is called thinking with ghalib and in doing that book i realized how relevant ghalib was to our times today not just the beautiful poetry but the ideas that he was talking about and when azim premji university radio station came along it seemed the perfect opportunity to introduce ghalib to newer and newer audiences i hope that in this series through these poems you will see what i mean when i talk about the relevance of poetry to us after all william carlos williams a famous english poet expressed it i think better than anywhere else i've seen he says It is difficult to get the news from poems yet men die every day for lack of what is found there that poetry teaches us to be human and to live with each other what we are going to do in this show over the course of the next few episodes is explore ghalib the man his times and above all his poetry so join me and find out You hota to kya hota The world of Ghalib with Amit Basole Episode 1 The man and his times The year is 1842 an Englishman named James Thomson who was the lieutenant governor of the northwestern provinces has a job to do he is conducting job interviews for the post of professor of persian in the new government college in delhi popularly known as delhi college one of the applicants for this job of professor of persian is a 45 year old man aristocratic bearing wearing his trademark flowing chogas a robe with a kamarband and a tall kula or hat on his head it is mirza asadullah beg khan better known to us by his pen name ghalib Mirza Ghalib is applying for a job to teach Persian. All of us have heard of Ghalib and poetry and many of us have seen the show. Where is this job interview coming from you think? Well, I'm going to tell you about it. Incidentally, the guy who's interviewing Ghalib, James Thomson, you know what else he is known for? He was the guy who suggested that the first modern engineering college in India be set up to train engineers who were working on the then Ganga Canal. and this college which is called the thomson college of civil engineering after him we know today as iit roorkee a funny thing happened in this job interview uh, which i assume must have been ghalib's one and only interview for a job in his life 
So he comes to the interview in his palki. Remember, he's an aristocrat. He goes everywhere in palki. And he waits there. The palki bearer set down his palki and he's waiting there. And inside is our Mr. Thompson waiting for the candidate to come to the job uh, interview. And for a long time, nothing happens. Our interviewer is inside waiting and our interviewee is outside in his palki. Finally, Thompson says to the orderly, Why is this person not here? The orderly comes out and he sees Mirza Ghalib sitting there in his palki waiting. He says, Saab bula rahe interview ke liye. No. Sir is calling you for interview. And Ghalib says, but I, I have to be received. Nobody has come to receive me yet. You're just an orderly. So the orderly takes the message back to the Saab. He says, Saab, this is what is being said. He wants somebody to come and receive him, he says. Thompson comes out. And he explains the situation to Ghalib and says, Look, if you're a visitor to the palace or an official guest, you know, somebody will come and receive you. Here you've come to interview for a job. Nobody's going to come and receive you. You have to come in yourself. Ghalib is horrified, aghast. I was told that this job would increase my honor in society. It looks like it's going to cost me whatever honor I already have left. My honor is going to be gone. I don't want a He sits in his palki, goes back. And so he never, in the end, ends up doing this job. Francis Pritchett, who is a professor of Urdu at Columbia University, uh, who has a wonderful labor of love site on Ghalib called The Desert Full of Roses. I encourage you to really check it out. She quotes this anecdote of the job interview uh, in one of the verses of Ghalib. So the anecdote is from, incidentally, a book uh, by an Urdu literary critic called Mohammed Hussain Azad, who tells us this story about Ghalib. Pritchett has taken this story in her entry on the following verse of Ghalib and see if you can make the connection. Here's the verse. Bandagi mein bhi wo azada aur khud bhi hain ki hum bandagi mein in servitude bandagi mein bhi wo azada aur khud bhi hain ki hum ulte phir aaye dare kaaba agar wa na hua. It's a difficult verse maybe for some of you so I'll explain some of the difficult words. Even in servitude even an I'm a banda I'm so self-regarding and free, azada and khudbeen. And how free and self-regarding am I? The second line gives you the proof, as it were, that when I go to the mosque to pray, I expect the door to open, to receive me. And if it doesn't, then I'm just going to come back. Ulta phiraunga main, agar masjid ka darwaja khula nahi mere liye. Of course, he's making fun, as you can imagine, but this is Ghalib. He is very mischievous even when he's making serious points, as we will see many times in our show. How does this story connect to the job interview? Well, I leave it to you to make the connection. What I want to talk about is also how this story nicely captures the contrasts with which Ghalib lived all his life. On the one hand, you have all the niceties and the trappings of a, an aristocratic age when people are used to being received in a certain way, there is all this protocol to be followed and so forth. That's one side. And the other side, you have the modern world of jobs and colleges and things like that, which is very familiar to us, actually. Ghalib is in the middle of all of this. In fact, he has another verse in which he jokes about how he is now a knocker and he should forget about the fact that he used to be something much more, an aristocrat. He says, Ghalib, Vazifa khwar ho, do shah ko dua. A vazifa is a pension or a stipend. So a vazifa khwar is somebody who eats, literally, a stipend, or somebody who lives by a pension. Ghalib, vazifa khwar ho, do shah ko dua. Praise the emperor. Wo din gaye ki kehte the, naukar nahi hu main. Those days are gone when you used to say, main kisi ka naukar nahi hu, I'm not a servant. Now, in fact, I am. So, through these verses, Ghalib is reflecting on one of his most, one could say, defining characteristics. And certainly we know from his letters something that weighed on his mind very heavily. On the other side... Usne wo kaagaz jo mujhko dikhaya, yakin samajna ke mujhko rona aaya. Shahir Dilli ka zarra zarra khaak. Tashna khoon hai har musalman ka. What is this adha musalman? I 
think a lot of uh, writers especially history writers make the mistake of putting the cart before the horse all stories are actually driven by characters the horses and when your story begins to be told through the eyes of characters they come alive all great storytelling is all about people taking you through a maze of developments even setbacks sadness happiness celebrations and lot of fun the india project are our efforts to celebrate those characters who haven't received enough attention from the mainstream history writing the india project with josie joseph only on radio azim prem ji university even though he had no children of his own halib was responsible for his brother's family his brother had been mentally unsound he had died early there, there were his children to be taken care of and there were other members of the extended family to be taken care of haqiqati mera ek bhai deewana mar gaya uski beti uske char bacche uski maa yani meri bhavaj jaipur mein pade hue hain is 3 baras mein ek rupya unko nahi bheja भतीजी क्या कहती होगी कि मेरा भी कोई चचा है यहाँ अग्निया और उमरा के गालिब बॉयहुड वॉज स्पेंड इन आगरा ही गॉट मैरिड क्वाइट अर्ली वेन ही वॉज थर्टीन हिज वाइफ वॉज ओनली इलेवन एट द टाइम एंड ही मूव टू डेली सो ही मूव टू डेली अराउंड एटीन टेन एंड देर आफ्टर मोरलेस रिमेन देर टिल ही डाइड इन एटीन सिक्सटी नाइन what is interesting about these times and of which ghalib was fully a participant is that delhi was about to enter into a kind of a sort of a golden age of cultural efflorescence or renaissance several decades of peace and stability under british rule were accompanied by a lot of poetry writing the development of urdu prose regular poetry gatherings uh, under the patronage of the mughal emperor who had no political power but had all of this cultural capital He died in 1869 fully 12 years after the first Indian war of independence in 1857 So you can imagine the historical political distance that we travel during his lifetime when he is a boy in Delhi in the early 1800s the british are just getting in control of delhi by the time he is dead victoria is now queen of india the world has completely changed and ghalib himself lived through all of these changes we can see this in his poetry very clearly on the one hand he is the inheritor of a classical poetic tradition that goes back hundreds of years by a persian to great poets like rumi and hafiz and so on on the other hand he is also a very modern person who when in calcutta picked up the habit of reading newspapers at the time delhi didn't have newspapers when he went to calcutta he was exposed to all of these modern institutions in a way brought in by the british so ghalib's poetry is classical it connects back to centuries of poetry but it's also modern he is as some people have said the last classical poet of urdu and the first modern poet of urdu so for example to take these many moods of ghalib if you think of a famous couplet of his like mat pooch ke kya haal hai mera tere piche tu dekh ke kya rang tera mere aage mat pooch ke kya haal hai mera tere piche tu dekh ke kya rang tera mere aage don't ask what happens when you are not with me what haal becomes of me you just see when you are in front of me how you radiant and glowing you are मेरे सामने जब तुम होते हो तुम देखो तुम्हारा क्या रंग होता है दिस इज अ वेरी क्लासिकल लव थीम एंड गालिब हैज मेनी वर्सेस ब्यूटीफुल वर्सेस लाइक दिस इन दिस थीम व्हिच वी विल एक्सप्लोर इन आवर लेटर एपिसोड्स बट ही आल्सो हैज अदर मूड्स व्हिच मेनी ऑफ अस टुडे वुड रिकॉग्नाइज इंस्टेंटली एज अ वेरी वेरी मॉडर्न सेंटिमेंट फॉर एग्जांपल थिंक अबाउट बस के दुश्वार है हर काम का आसा होना बस के दुश्वार है हर काम का आसा होना आदमी को भी मुयसर नहीं इंसा होना मीनिंग दैट एवरी जॉब कांड बी इजी हर काम आसान नहीं होता इवन ह्यूमन बींग्स कांड बी ह्यूमन आदमी को भी मुयसर नहीं इंसा होना मीनिंग 
that play between Admi and Insan that we can relate to so much that we are all biologically human beings or whatever. But to be human is something different. It's not enough just to be born in this biological species that we call Homo sapiens. It's about values, it's about behaving in a certain way. And our modern condition is exactly the disconnect between being an Admi and aspiring to be an Insan, having that Insaniyat. Again, this kind of take on the human condition really makes Ghalib so instantly relatable to us, much more than many of these classical things about vines and beloveds and all of that, which he also has. Eighteen fifty-seven is a huge event, of course, in Indian history, but also in Ghalib's own personal history. He was an old man by the time eighteen fifty-seven happened. He had an established reputation for being one of the preeminent Urdu and Persian poets of the time. Uh, he had, with great difficulty, attained the status of court poet also by then of the Emperor Bahadur Shah Zafar. So to have all of this come crashing down in a huge, violent upheaval was a tremendous shock to him personally. And this comes out repeatedly in his letters. We have a lot of letters that he wrote to a wide variety of people. His shagirds mainly, his students. He had many, many students who he taught how to write poetry. His patrons, people who used to support him and so on. There's a circle of people that he is regular correspondence with. And in those letters written in the late 1850s, early 1860s, uh, he talks repeatedly about what was lost in those years for him personally and in general for society. Uh, and one remarkable personal loss is that he says at one point in one of his letters that he himself doesn't have much of his poetry left with him anymore. हजारों रुपए की किताब खाने बर्बाद हुए अब मैं अपने कलाम के देखने को तरसता हूं कई दिन हुए कि एक फकीर के वो खुश आवाज भी है और जमजमा परदाज भी है एक गजल मेरी कहीं से लिखवा लाया उसने वो कागज जो मुझको दिखाया यकीन समझना कि मुझको रोना आया गजल तुमको भेजता हूं और सिले में उसके इस खत का जवाब चाहता हूं ही सेज मेरा कलाम मेरे पास नहीं है वेन आई वॉन्ट टू रीड माई ओन पोएट्री आई डोंट नो वेयर टू टर्न टू एंड दैट इज बिकॉज पीपल हु हैड दीज कलेक्शन एंड बुक्स देयर लाइब्रेरीज वर रैंस एक्ट एंड बर्न एंड एंड सो फोर्थ सो इमेजिन अ मैन हु इज famous in his own lifetime in fact so famous that in another one of his letters he chastises somebody who has inquired you know i want to write to you uh, and through a friend he asks him can you send me ghalib's address please i want to write to him and ghalib is very annoyed at the fact that somebody should have to ask his address he says wo kaam ke khat farsi aur angrezi yahan tak ke vilayat ke aaye hue sirf shehar ka naam aur mera naam ye sab maratib tum jante ho और इन खतूत को तुम देख चुके हो और फिर मुझसे पूछते हो कि अपना मस्कन बता आप सिर्फ दिल्ली लिखकर मेरा नाम लिख दिया कीजिए खत पहुंचने का मैं जामिन यू जस्ट से गालिब एंड दिल्ली आई एम रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर इंश्योरिंग दैट इट रीचेज मी डोंट वरी लेटर विल रीच मी एंड दैट गिव्स यू एंड आई एम श्योर दैट्स नॉट अ बोस्ट एक्चुअली गिवन हाउ फेमस ही वॉज एट द टाइम Now imagine this guy multiple volumes of poetry out even his collection of prose his letters were published in his lifetime so people recognize the value of all of the output that he was producing and he is as i told you in want of money applying for jobs and failing borrowing and in debt and after 1857 really has lost the one kind of you know capital or wealth that you think a man like him has which is his own work In one of his uh, poems Ghalib has the following lines which capture the shock that was 1857 he says Shehr Delhi ka zarra zarra khak tashna khoon hai har musalman ka Every speck of dust in Delhi zarra zarra is thirsty for the blood of muslims 
تشنا خون ہے ہر مسلمان کا تشنا انسیڈنٹلی از اے ویری انٹرسٹنگ ورڈ ان اردو وچ از دا سیم ایز دا سنسکرت ورڈ ترشنا اٹس ون آف دوز ناؤنس دیٹ یو فائنڈ ان غالب وچ آر ناٹ کمنگ فرام پرشن اور عربک بٹ ایکچولی فرام سنسکرت اینی وے دس ورس کمیونیکیٹس دا کائنڈ آف ٹمالٹ اینڈ دا شاک دیٹ پرٹیکولرلی دا سٹی از مسلمس بیکاز دے ویر ایسوسیٹیڈ وتھ دی مغل ایمپائر اینڈ سسپیکٹیڈ آف لائلٹی ٹو دا ریسٹوریشن آف دیر ایمپائر دیٹ دے ویر سبجیکٹیڈ ٹو دیر از اے کلاسک غالب اینکڈوٹ وچ مکسز دس ٹراما اینڈ گریف اینڈ اینگزائٹی وتھ مسٹیویسنس بیکاز دیٹس آلویز سو انٹرٹوائنڈ ان ہز پرسنالٹی وین ایٹین ففٹی سیون ہیپنڈ اینڈ سو فورتھ آفٹر دیٹ دیر واز آل آف دس اسٹاک ٹیکنگ آف ہو از ان ڈیلی ہو از سسپیکٹ ہو از آن یور سائڈ ہو از آن آور سائڈ اینڈ سو فورتھ اینڈ پیپل ور بینگ کالڈ ہالڈ اپ ان فرنٹ آف دا برٹش اینڈ سو واز غالب اینڈ دا آفیسر آسٹ غالب ایز ہی واز آسکنگ ایوری ون ایلس آر یو اے مسلم اینڈ غالب جان سب واز آئی ایم ہاف اے مسلم میں آدھا مسلمان ہوں اینڈ دا آفیسر نیچرلی واز ٹیکن اے بیک says what is this adha musliman i drink wine i don't eat pork he was trying to diffuse the tension in a otherwise very very difficult situation we will see this kind of mixture many more times over the next episodes we will have a lot of opportunity to meet ghalib the wit the ghalib the philosopher ghalib the lover I just thought that before we dive into his poetry, it's good to get a sense of the man and his times. And that is what we have done um, in this episode. If you want to dig deeper into any of the ideas we have discussed today um, or read more about Ghalib and his poetry, I encourage you to visit the show notes where we have collected a whole bunch of resources that are out there, including the excellent website of Professor Francis Pritchard, which I have alluded to many times. There are also excellent video lectures by Ustad Ahmed Javed of Lahore, um, as well as many other uh, nice articles and books collected over there. That was episode one, The Man and His Times. On the next episode... What do we know about uh, Ghalib personally as a lover? عمر بھر میں ایک بڑی ستم پیشہ ڈومنی کو میں نے بھی مار رکھا ہے اپنی گلی میں دفن نہ کر مجھ کو باد قتل میرے پتے سے خلق کو کیوں تیرا گھر ملے Make sure you check out the show notes where we share the show resources and acknowledgements and don't forget to subscribe or follow our channel for future episodes.